Welcome to Thoughts on the Market. I'm Jim Egan, co-head of U.S. Securitized Products Research here at Morgan Stanley. And I'm Jay Bacco, the other co-head of U.S. Securitized Products Research. And on this episode of the podcast, we'll be discussing the U.S. housing and mortgage markets. It's Wednesday, February 22nd at 11 a.m. in New York. All right. So, Jim, when we're looking at data on the housing market, it seems like it's all over the place. We've got home sale activity pointing one direction. We've got home prices doing other things. What's going on? You've had this bifurcation narrative. Is the bifurcation narrative still bifurcating? So to remind our listeners, the bifurcation narrative for our housing forecasts is between home prices, which we thought were a lot more protected, and housing activity. So sales and housing starts where we thought you were going to see a lot more weakness. And I would say that bifurcation narrative still exists. But as you're saying, the different data have been pointing to different things. For instance, purchase applications, they picked up sequentially in January from December. And after declining in every single month of 2022, the home builder confidence has increased in both January and February. All right. But when I think about what happened over that time period, mortgage rates fell almost 100 basis points from their highs in November as you measure that purchase application pickup from December to January. Is that playing a role? Do you think that there are signs that maybe housing activity is going to pick back up? So from a mortgage rate perspective, it'd be difficult for us to say it isn't. So we do think that that's playing a role, but we also think it's a little too early to say that housing activity is going to pick back up from here. For one thing, mortgage rates might have come down 100 basis points from mid-November into January, but they've also begun to move higher over the past few weeks. And for another, the variables that we've been paying close attention to haven't really shown much improvement. Those variables, you mean affordability and supply. How are those looking now? Exactly. Now, let's think about what drove our bifurcation hypothesis in the first place. Because of the record growth in home prices that we saw in 2021 and 2022, combined with the sharp increase in mortgage rates in 2022, they were up almost 400 basis points before that 100 basis point decline that we talked about, affordability deteriorated more than at any point in over three decades. In fact, the year-over-year deterioration was roughly three times what we experienced in the years leading up to the GFC. Now, we want to remind our listeners that this affordability deterioration is really for first-time home buyers. Given the vast predominance of the fixed-rate mortgage in the United States, most homeowners have a low 30-year fixed-rate mortgage with an average rate of about 3.5%. Obviously, their affordability didn't change. What did change was prospective homeowners that are looking to buy a house and now would have to take a mortgage at a higher rate. That does mean that those people with a low fixed rate mortgage, they've got low rates. And that means that they simply have not been incentivized to list their homes for sale. The inventory of existing homes available for sale plummeted to over 40-year lows and we only really have 40 years of data. More importantly, for the drop in sales volumes that we've seen, If an existing homeowner is not selling their home, they're also not buying a home on the follow. That further exaggerates the drop. But thinking about where we are today, affordability is no longer rapidly deteriorating. In fact, it's basically been unchanged over the past three months. And inventories, they remain near 40-year lows, but they're also no longer falling rapidly. If anything, they're actually kind of increasing on the margins. It is only on the margins because of that lock-in effect that you mentioned, Jay. Okay, but it is increasing slightly. So if you have a little bit of a pickup in inventory and basically unchanged affordability, what does that mean for home sales? Affordability is challenged and supply is very tight, but both are no longer getting even more stretched. In other words, we don't see a catalyst for sales volumes to inflect higher from here, but we also don't think the ingredients are in place for large month-over-month declines to continue either. I wouldn't say that sales have bottomed. But I would lean more towards they are in the process of bottoming right now. We expect volumes to be weak in the first half of 2023, but perhaps not substantially weaker than they were in the fourth quarter of 2022, where volumes retraced all the way back to 2010 levels. We also want to emphasize that this will still result in significant year-over-year declines, given how strong the first half of 2022 was. The January purchase applications that I earlier stated were moving higher, they were down 40% year over year from January of 2022. And they also have started to come down a little bit in February. The existing home sales print that happened earlier this week for January, that was down 37% year over year. All right. So home sale activity is in the process of bottoming, 
but it's down 37% to 40% depending on what number that we're talking about. If in order for things to bifurcate, we need another side. So what's happening with prices? I would say that prices are still more protected. That doesn't mean that prices are going to continue to grow. When we think about year-over-year growth in prices, it continues to slow. We were down to 7.7% in the most recent print, which represents November home prices. We'll get the December print next week. We think it'll slow to roughly 6% when we get that. And month over month, home prices have been coming down. They're down about 3.5% from peak, which was June of 2022. We do think that year-over-year will still turn negative in 2023, the first time that's happened since 2012. But even if we get the 4% decline in home prices in 2023 that we're calling for, that would still only really bring us back to the end of 2021, which is up 30% from the onset of the pandemic in March of 2020. And as I mentioned earlier, sales volumes hit levels we hadn't seen since 2010. So that bifurcation still exists. All right. So that bifurcation between home sales and home prices is still going to exist. Jim, always great talking to you. Great talking to you too, Jay. And thank you for listening. If you enjoy Thoughts on the Market, please leave us a review on the Apple Podcasts app and share the podcast with a friend or colleague today. The preceding content is informational only and based on information available when created. It is not an offer or solicitation, nor is it tax or legal advice. It does not consider your financial circumstances and objectives and may not be suitable for you. 